Hello everyone and welcome to Victoria's Cantina, where today we're having a look at the Hasbro Star Wars The Vintage Collection Emperor's Throne Room. Super, super excited about this set. Huge thanks to Hasbro for sending me this free review sample. I love seeing new concepts in the Vintage Collection, just like the Stormtrooper 4-pack that I recently reviewed. And um, my only regret about this is that it is a con exclusive, so... Uh, it's going to be very hard to get. Nonetheless, I'm grateful to have this set and uh, I'm really admiring the packaging. I think it looks fantastic. I love how Hasbro's using their figures in there to recreate the throne room set. Um, I've been wanting this for a long time. I wrote a, an article on BanthaSkull.com, um, I think about a year or so ago, um, suggesting that you know this be one of the play sets, the Emperor's Throne Room, be one of those modular play sets they've been doing lately. And uh, maybe this is the first step in that direction, just giving us the actual throne. So we'll see what's to come for now. You know, super pleased that we at least have this. I do quite love how there is some information on the side of the box. You not only see the figure, but you also get a description um, about the set itself. Rising from the North Pole of the second Death Star is a 100 story isolation tower reserved for the Emperor from which he oversees the battle station's operations. The tower's four spokes house a throne room, Palpatine's private chambers, and a vault reserved for Sith artifacts. This throne room was the site of the climatic showdown between Jedi and Sith at the Battle of Endor. I never knew it was the North Pole, I never knew it was 100 stories tall, so that's pretty cool to find out. On the opposite side, uh, we just get a look at another scene utilizing uh, the figure, utilizing the chair in the background looks pretty cool. And at the back, it basically looks the same. However, the bottom does have the Disney and Hasbro logo, whereas the front did not. So you can see that the box is actually an outer slip sleeve. Um, there is a carton on the inside. It's held in by double-sided tape on the top and uh, also on the bottom. So once you remove the slip case from the figure, um, you have this very nice, it looks like the Emperor's elevator that Darth Vader and Luke use in the movie. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, just all the way around. Um, it does have that theme to it. Um, but once you remove the slip sleeve, slip case, it does become a bit loose. So um, the intent is essentially that the sides pop down like this. And you get a larger uh, cardboard throne room. I think that's pretty cool. I think that is pretty cool. You can see that it does have details that are seen in the film. Uh, in Return of the Jedi on both sides. I think it's pretty neat. I think it is pretty neat and it makes it a little bit hard for me to to open it all up completely because then you know you're gonna kind of do away with some of the presentation by removing the packaging. It does have tape so maybe I can put it back together when I finish um, but then there's also a little a little drawer down here at the bottom and I'll just open that and I think this is gonna have the accessories right here let's see yep that totally has the accessories right here so obviously the tape is gonna kind of come apart so you know you're gonna have to replace the tape if you decide to do this yeah that didn't come off as cleanly as I was, as I was th thinking it might so you know not a big deal it's just tape that can be easily replaced um, and I maybe I don't even need to remove the other side uh, right here, this comes out. This is the uh, the backdrop right here, the plastic backdrop. Um, it does look like it does have that cardboard in place. Not too dissimilar from what they did with those Black Series 40th anniversary um, Darth Vader figures that had a cardboard backdrop encased in a plastic frame. Um, so this is pretty cool. I do like the backdrop here with the vehicles uh, in the background, the Star Destroyers. It does look like a scene or a still from the film quite possibly. So I guess the next trick would be to try and remove the Emperor from, yeah. Can you do it? Maybe. Let's take these little string things off. Uh, if I can get that. Nah, it's not gonna work because if I wanna remove the Emperor, I'm actually going to have to cut this little plastic. I don't think it's gonna come out. I'm gonna have to cut that, but you know, that's what we're here to do, so. All right, here he is out of the packaging. We'll go ahead and put him aside for just a moment here. And we will take a look at the actual throne. Does the throne now just slide out from the packaging? Yes, it does. There's the throne. 
All right, so here's a look at the Emperor. And, um, you know, if you watched that previous review I did <laughs> with this latest wave of TVC figures, then you know I wasn't the biggest fan of this figure, um, especially that they uh, made a big deal about saying, hey, this is VC number 200, and, you know, that we got to commemorate this number with a special figure, special character, the Emperor. But it wasn't important enough that they could have been bothered to go back and re-sculpt it from the ground up and give us the one and done, definitive, never have to touch it again, Emperor figure. Unfortunately, that's definitely not what that was, and that is not what this is here. Um, really, this is just a different head portrait compared to the standalone release. We will compare them in just a little bit, but as you can see, it's very flowy, very bulky um, with that soft goods. And I can kind of see why they would reuse such an old figure. I mean, it's just basically covering it up in the soft goods with the new uh, sculpted hood, new head, new um, belt, if you want to call it a belt, that sash. And um, I mean, I get that, but what kills me is that this could have been so much more, it could have been so much better. And, you know, it kind of just is what it is. So, I mean, it just definitely looks like they shortchanged um, the Emperor, which is very, very unfortunate. And yeah, the soft goods, I don't know, was the best implementation. Um, again, the Force Link 2.0 figure that I did compare to uh, to this figure or to the standalone release in that previous video looks so much better to me. Um, I feel like they should have just taken that figure and then adopted the uh, super articulation format. Um, but they didn't do that. So the end result here is just kind of a mishmash of old and new. And it's not really that great. It's not really that great, unfortunately. Now, of course, um, we do get a different head sculpt this time around. The standalone figure just had the really evil, smiley, cackling, classic emperor look to it. This is more of a neutral uh, face and um, kind of the one that most people seem to be saying, you know, should have been the standalone release. So let's go and take a closer look at the head sculpt. Now, I will say that the head itself, the face, looks pretty good. Um, compared to the other one, which was very much a caricature, very um, animated sort of look to it. This one does look a little more realistic. And it's just very grinny. Now this this hood kind of just bounces up and down. It gets pushed up by the soft goods, so it's it's not even like the best like implementation. I mean, if you hold it down, it looks good. If you let it go, it kind of just pops up. You can try and move the head around. Um, you know, we can try and do that. Unfortunately, though... Uh, what I found when I was uh, taking this out of the packaging is that the head on my figure, it's better now, but it was very, very tight. I had to get the blow dryer and, and throw hot air at it because it just wouldn't budge and I didn't want to snap the neck peg. It's better now. It moves around. It has kind of a Bill Murray sort of look to it, <laughs> just like the Black Series one does. Um, kind of a very creepy looking head. The hairline looks so unnatural. You know, it doesn't even have like a gradient or anything. It's just like kind of like a straight line. And then it's like a full head of hair, but only half on the head. You know, a little weird. But it is a better looking head. He does have a little smile. It's not completely neutral. He does have a little smile there that he's he's giving you. He does have photo reels, so the paint technique is really good. Uh, you can see that the eyes are kind of like orangey colored. He's got some red skin below under his eyes and... He's not quite as pale as he needs to be. This was my same issue with the, the standalone release. He needs to be more pale. He's just kind of a little, he looks a little too healthy, I would say. Um, but yeah, even if you compare it to the neck, the neck is a little more ashen in color than the actual head is. So I'm not sure what happened there. Even if you look at the hands, the hands are more ashy in color than his, than his face is. So I, again, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Uh, these hands are awful, by the way. They're just terrible. They go back so many years. No excuse. This should have been a much better figure. Um, so you do have the soft goods that he swims in. We're just going to pull this off. Um, it does have a little bit of a stretchy sort of quality to it. So, you know, it does kind of flex. Um, basically, when you get him out, this is what you got. Okay, this is what you got here. As I said in the previous video, there are some differences with the actual tooling. Um, if you want to get all the details of that, go back to that video, please, and see what that what that's all about. But there are some new parts, some old parts as well. This right here, um, the sash is new. Um, the legs are old. And that's what he looks like underneath here. 
Um, yeah, so as far as articulation goes, he does have the ball joint um, up here. So you get some decent movement with it. Uh, let me know if you guys' uh, figure was had a really tight head like mine did. So you do have insert molded joints here at the shoulders. So you do get good movement. Um, the thing is that it's not the best movement, especially not by 2021 standards. Like you don't even get like a, well, you almost get a 90 degree angle there, but not fully. These are just rotations. And again, look how mangled and nasty those look. Not that the Emperor is a hand model or anything, but this just looks like the dog got a hold of the hands and chewed them up. They really just don't look very good. You have a silver here at the waist. The hips go out, not even a full 90 degrees either. Uh, and then you have insert molded joints here at both of the, both of the knees. Um, again, you're not going to get a full 90 degrees, so sitting, it's close, very close, but sitting isn't going to be 100% dead on. Um, you do get a hinge here at the ankles. You can rotate them. So, I mean, yeah, it's not terrible in terms of the joints. It's just like they're not like the most useful joints when it comes down to it. Considering you have the throne, considering you have these soft goods you got to contend with. Um, yeah, it could have been a lot better. We'll go ahead and bring in the standalone figure here on the right. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is the facial expression. Um, obviously, there's a really evil look about the standalone release, whereas the throne room version um, just has a very slight smug look to him. He's got a very slight grin. Uh, the head basically is the same other than the expression. That's going to be the real difference between these two figures color wise they're pretty similar i do feel like the detail is a little more crisp on the throne room release like just the eyes look a little more like clear to me a little more detailed whereas on the standalone release they're not quite as clear um, there's also a very slight difference in stitching here um, if you look at the standalone release it's kind of it looks like it's secured a little bit better whereas this one seems like it's it's not quite the best it's not quite, it seems a little more fragile, I guess is what I mean. It's like not on, it's only on a few threads. This one seems like it has a better stitching on it. With the hoods on, with the hoods on, um, I do feel like the uh, throne room release looks better. It looks more like the Emperor from Return of the Jedi. This looks more cartoony. It looks more like a caricature, something like out of a comic book that you might see. Um, I mean, I, I see that they both serve their purpose, but I completely agree. This should have been the standalone release. Most people are going to probably prefer this to this, even though it makes more sense for the emperor to, um, you know, be on the throne with a neutral expression. I get that. He still comes with a lightning, right? So does the standalone release. I think I understand what Hasbro's thinking was, but I don't know that the rationale behind it really made a whole lot of sense in this case. Of course, both versions of the figure have the cane. If you get the uh, throne room version, I think it looks a little bit better with the cane just because of the facial expression. The cane itself is the same cane we got before, so there's not going to be anything different uh, with this. What you see is what you get. And again, you get the lightning with both figures. Now, I do feel that the lightning does look quite a bit better with the standalone release on the right. Um, it works just fine, too, with the other one. I mean, I don't have any problems with that. I just think it fits the expression more when you talk about the single packed figure, which again, both of them have the lightning. So it doesn't really make sense that the standalone figure is the one that had to have the crazy portrait. And on a different note, I feel like the soft goods drapes better, at least on my figures, for the standalone release versus the throne room release. All right, then we have the throne. Now, this is very obviously the Emperor's throne from Return of the Jedi. You recognize it right away when you see it. It's got that very unique silhouette. I feel like they just took the Black Series release and scaled it down. I do have that figure as well, and to me it just seems like it's a scaled down version of the throne that came with that figure. So as you can see, it's got a really nice shape to it. It is kind of this uh, grayish plastic, kind of like a charcoal -y sort of color, very dark. Um, and then it has the purple like inlay um, setting for the more plushy, what I suspect is a plushy part of the chair. Um, it does look a little scratchy. Like if you look, if you look at it here, like in the, the light, like it is kind of like marbleized a little bit and then there are some scratches on it. So not the best presentation, I guess. Like, you know, you kind of wish that the sort of thing wouldn't happen, but there, are, there is some like scratching and scrapes on it. But um, for the most part, it does look good. I like the look of the um, 
I like how there's like a reflective quality to the actual like plush part of the chair, the padding. Um, you see some little details here, more details there. And interestingly, unlike the Black Series, this one does have the swivel, but it also kind of hinges um, at angles as well. So I guess if you wanted to maybe have him like kind of leaning up, watching a movie, if you wanted to have him leaning down, looking at the Death Star, um, you kind of do that, kind of tilts a little bit to the sides. I'm not really sure why they did that. It doesn't really move a lot, but hey, it moves and I guess you have, you have options. So combined with the swivel, uh, that is pretty cool. Now, as far as how the Emperor sits in it, well, he sits in it pretty well. Um, because this is an outdated figure, he's not the most posable. I, I'm sure if they, I know that if they went back to the well and did a completely brand new sculpt that, you know, he would look a little bit better. But I mean, just looking at it, his back doesn't sit all the way to the end of the chair um, towards the back. He's kind of at an angle like this um, solely because it is an outdated sculpt. And it, had they done a new one, with updated posability, that wouldn't be a concern. But I mean, it looks it looks decent enough um, for just getting in a repack or retool in this case and putting the throne in there. Um, it rather works. There's one of those scratches right there. Ugh. Um, I mean, he looks decent enough. Is it perfect? It's not. Is it the best we're ever going to get? Unfortunately, probably so. If you incorporate the backdrop that the figure comes with, well, that gives you a little bit more of an option. I mean, it is cool that it's there, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't really do a whole lot unless your backdrop kind of already looks like the Death Star, you're putting it on a black shelf or something. Um, it doesn't really do a whole lot. It doesn't plug into the throne or anything. It's just kind of its own standalone piece, um, but you can, you can use it. You can set it back more if you want to or you can bring it all the way up. It, it's up to you what, what you want to do. But I mean, the, the piece itself, it's a plastic frame with a cardboard insert. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, again, it's just kind of, it's kind of there. Um, I assume that uh, you could unscrew uh, the screws here and, uh, cause they don't pivot by themselves or anything. Um, I think if you unscrewed them, you could take the backdrop out and put your own backdrop or just use the star backdrop, flip it over. So at least it's nice to have that option. But again, it's, it's, it's all right. It's just when you just have the throne and you, you just have the backdrop, it doesn't really do a whole lot for creating a diorama. If it's in the box though, as you guys saw, if you incorporate the, the whole packaging and that looks pretty cool, but just like this, it's nice to have, but unless we get the full diorama for this throne room, um, which I hope we do, it doesn't really do a whole lot in terms of display options. And then the last thing we get is Luke Skywalker's Return of the Jedi lightsaber hilt. Again, this is a brand new lightsaber hilt. Um, lightsabers are kind of my jam. So, you know, I, I am very familiar with the subtleties of like the prop stunt lightsaber and the actual like Luke Return of the Jedi saber and, and the fact that they keep repacking Obi-Wan saber with a green blade every time they do a Luke figure in the vintage collection. This is accurate. This is accurate. It's very nicely painted. It's a little bit warped, but not terribly so. Uh, and it is very flimsy, as you can see, very plasticky. Now, in the film, the Emperor does place it on the throne. As you can see, there is no flat surface unless you go up here at the top, which kind of would be sort of weird. Um, the only thing you can do is look for this little control box right there and just kind of rest it uh, on the control box right there. So it will stay if you put it there. Um, but there isn't a flat surface for it, but this works. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. This is the Hasbro Star Wars, the vintage collection Emperor's Throne Room from Return of the Jedi Hasbro PulseCon exclusive in the U.S. Now I know these are hitting retail down in Mexico, which is interesting. So maybe another opportunity if you're trying to track it down. Uh, so overall, you guys, it is nice as an exclusive set. I do feel that more people are going to want to have this head sculpt and more people will want to have the throne. So I do sort of wish they could have worked it into one of their modular play sets that could have come with extra pieces. As it stands, it feels kind of incomplete. It's nice to have the throne, don't get me wrong. The plastic and cardboard backdrop too is, is decent enough, but this is really leaving me wanting more because I want to build out this scene from the film. It's one of my favorite scenes in all of Star Wars and uh, the Emperor is one of my favorite characters in Star Wars. So I think it more or less makes sense as a PulseCon exclusive, but the head sculpt should definitely have been on the mainline release. 
Hopefully they continue to flesh out this scene because uh, I would definitely like to to have the stairs. I'd like to have those two things that are on the side. But it's called cool. Definitely grateful to have it. And I want to thank you for tuning in. If you are not subscribed already, what the heck are you doing here? Please subscribe, like, comment. Let me know what you think about this set. What's your favorite aspect to it? Are you missing out by not having it? Let me know your thoughts. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Subscribe to the Vintage Collection Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And no matter where you're watching from out in the galaxy, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to Victoria's Cantina. Until next time, bye-bye.